Friends Podcast. Hi, I'm Diane Hunt. I'm an impressionist realist painter connecting with nature through my brush. I work in oil paint and watercolor and I live in the countryside of Maryland's eastern shore, not far from the Chesapeake Bay. You can find me online at dianehuntstudio.com and on Facebook and Instagram at Diane Hunt Studio. Hi, I'm Constance Brosson of Steve Brosson's Jewelry Designs. I live in Oklahoma on a prairie and I make uh, handmade jewelry in silver, copper, and brass. I'm an artist that paints. I paint pastels and in oil sometimes. Hello, this is Clyde JKL. I'm the host of this podcast. I am a emerging representational artist. I do historic rend- renderings, seascapes, landscapes, volcanicals, birds, and whatnot. With a tight illustrative hand in watercolor, pen and ink, and acrylic paints. And I live in Oklahoma City. And here we are. This is Monday, April the 6th, 2020. This is Clyde J. Gale, and you are listening to the Artist Friends Podcast. This is, this is episode 41, and hopefully we won't have as much noise uh, interference as last time. I was, apologize. Last week's podcast uh, was really horrible. I guess Zoom and the internet and everything else was uh, having problems. But I'm here with two of my artist friends, my best artist friends, Constance and Diane. Hello, Diane. Hi, Clyde. Hi, Constance. Hello, everyone. And hello, Constance. Hi, Clyde. Hi, Diane. Hello, everybody out there. Welcome to the show, folks. This week... If you recall, a couple episodes back, we did a studio visit of with Diane and some of her art. This week, it's my turn. We're going to visit my, my uh, super large studio with its palatial curtains and, yeah, right. <laughs> Let's get started and look at some, some of my art, and we'll let... Uh, Diane and uh, Constance uh, critique it and comment and laugh and whatnot. <laughs> a few, I guess maybe a year ago or several months, I've read different uh, recommendations of when you're setting up your website and putting your art up. Uh, some people say advise only most recent work. Other people advise uh, early work and to build uh, a, so you can uh, demonstrate how you've improved and whatnot. So I just kind of, when I started, I just started throwing everything up there. So this is when I uh, first started and and was going to uh, pursue this uh, art journey. It was back in 2017. This is one of probably the third piece of artwork that I created after having not created anything for like 26 years. This particular piece was inspired by a uh, photograph that I took when I was with my daughters over in uh, Rome, Italy in 2005. And I was uh, trying to take a picture of that water fountain and with St. Peter's in the back. And just as I snapped the camera, this pigeon flew up right in front of it. It looked like an angel. And we didn't notice until later when we were looking at the photographs that, you know, it was a digital camera. And uh, this is probably the third piece of artwork that I created after having not created anything for like 26 years. 
and my it's a watercolor combination watercolor pen and ink and uh, i title it uh, holy pigeons and it's 11 by 15 inch paper and it's over in italy because my daughter one of it that that's her artwork <laughs> <laughs> So in trying to decide for this uh, studio visit, you know, what is my, uh, what I should show. Oh, God, it was horrible. <laughs> I, could, I had a hard time. So I, I, I decided I'll show some early stuff and then progress up to my latest. So hopefully this won't be too long. You guys want to comment on it or anything good or bad or. The composition is really pleasing i guess the um the, the pigeon kind of <laughs> it's like a vocal point right at the front of the picture that kind of um then you you look at that and then you kind of lead back into the painting to see the rest of what's going on so it's, it's interesting yeah the, curve, was... the, the curved line at the bottom kind of brings you around into the building yeah thank you i never really I all this. yeah it kind of has <laughs> like this little backwards <clears throat> see thing going on if you look at mm -hmm. the lines coming in and then the building going back out it's like a nice curve coming and then the yeah, birds in the middle the straight the lines point. from the uh, building it kind of holds you there for a little bit and then you go yeah. on through yeah because you know i really <clears throat> i've been an artist my whole life but having been out of practice for 26 years having not physically drawn anything or painted anything like I said, this is like about my third, you know, about my third creation. I mean, I had done uh, three or four of different things, just getting used to drawing again, and it was completely disappointed and frustrated. In fact, I was going to quit. And I was showing my daughters, my daughters, they, you know, they, they said, no, no, you just keep at it. You're, you're start remembering. And I told them, you know, I was getting frustrated. I, I was, I started <laughs> watching a lot of YouTube uh, videos. Of, you know how to draw again and how the the watercolors to 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 get myself you know back into you know well that's food. that's the thing like about art and any any arts even like playing an instrument you don't just pick it up and play a concert you're not like a concert pianist the first time you play a piano you have to practice at it even if you had like a lot of practice and then you take it some years off. You're going to be rusty as anything before you, mm -hmm. you know, get back to that same level you were before. Yeah. And the arts are the same way, any, any of the arts. So, you know, it's, so, it's uh, so expected. Never, <laughs> in fact, I'll be honest with you. I really didn't like it. <laughs> <laughs> but I showed it to my daughter, and my daughter said, no, I want it. Do not tear it up. Do not throw it away. I mean, she was just, I said, well, what if I sell it? Uh, get a lot of money for it. Oh, okay. <laughs> but no, she had. It's over in Italy now. She had. Uh, well, uh, you know, sometimes even the stuff you don't like when you when you first start, it's good to hang on to that stuff. I mean, I have stuff that I had back when I was in high school. I think it's nice to look back at that because you can see how far you've come, like you know, and where you were yeah, then. Like right. it was, it was good for that time, but then. You've been, you know, you can see really see your improvement. Yeah, absolutely, when you look back at stuff. That, that's what motivated me. I decided to just, you know, to, to start throwing all this, you know, stuff up on the website, so that if you go through my website, uh, you can see a definite progress. You know, progress. You can see where I've, you know, advanced. Okay, then you know we took the course of Paul Klein, and of course he talked about you know finding an art village, and with his. Uh, uh, one-on-one uh, -on -one call we came up with he got out of me that you know i like old time radio and everything so why aren't you doing some drawings like related to that so i came up with my pulp radio art you know series and uh, started doing i have a bunch of them but this is only one that i just for our our purposes of the uh, uh black and white you know pen and ink uh sketches and drawings that are related to the, you know, kind of like old time radio. And what was so interesting, uh, I never realized this, Diane, but when, you know, Paul Michi, you know, used to, uh, you know, meet with us, you know, one of our artist friends. Mm -hmm. And he said, you know what? 
I was showing some of those drawings. I don't know if you remember, you know, when I, when I started out, I showed some of the drawings. And he said, that kind of reminds me a little bit of, uh, of uh, Montgomery uh, Flag. And I, Montgomery Flag, because I, you know, I had to search on the internet afterwards. Oh, yeah, I know that guy. Yeah. <laughs> and so, so I uh, uh, really, without realizing it, as a kid, I used to love all of his illustrations because he used to, they used to be in the, you know, he was a big magazine illustrator, you know, in the early, early uh, 19, you know, 1920, 1930s, you know, period. And so a lot of his uh, works is, was in magazines and, and uh, uh, comic books and things. And so it was rather flattering that, you know, I got a, a style similar to, uh, you know, you know, Montgomery flag, you know? <laughs> well, I th yeah, I think a lot of that comes because you you spend so much time looking at it. It becomes part of you. It's like, I mean, it's kind of like how my art is too. It's like I spend so much time outside and, you know, observing things and I kind of soaked it in and it's kind of part of what I do. And the same way with your stuff, you're, you're really, um, it reminds me of the black and white TV shows. And I remember when I was a kid, you yeah. know, that kind of stuff. Yeah. And, and of course, listen, and it goes, you know, great with the old time radio, you know? Mm -hmm. And so that was, you know, I want for, from an uh, illustration from that, but then I took it one step further and I wanted to get into uh, acrylic painting at this time. I was, you know, at this point, this is like in the late, late 2017 2018 and i was uh, really wanted to get into the acrylic but i wasn't quite so sure you know so i came up with this is a, a piece i call it uh, noir danger you know it's a old time radio related um i call it it's from my evolution series and what what i refer to as evolution all of the elements in the composition and for our listeners this is a um, rather dark it's a man and it looks like a detective in the foreground and then it's in a dark room and then upstairs there's a lady in a bed and from the window you can see uh, police lights you know like police are coming so it leaves an element of suspense um, all the elements were uh, hand-drawn either in watercolor or pen and ink and then I photographed them and then I used a digital uh, program like Photoshop and created a composition, put them all together in the composition. And then I sent that to a printer and a discount printer and had it printed on this one is a, uh, a 24 by 36 inch uh, canvas on a you know, stretch canvas. And then I am, when that comes back from the printer, then I embellish it with acrylic paint, in acrylic uh, gel medium to give it texture, you know, and everything. So uh, I've got maybe four or five of these uh, different uh, paintings. Some of them are, a couple of them are still in the, the last stage where I have to add the acrylic, you know, embellishment. And then other ones have been, you know, complete, completely done. But this one following the pulp radio art, kind of like it's, uh, you know, in that same, uh, you know, genre, whatever. It reminds me of um, some of those old detective novels, like the book covers, you know. That's that's what it reminds me of. Or old detective shows. They're starting to show more of them, yeah. of them again. You know, the, the Gumshoe uh, series, you know, and it reminds me of that. Yeah, thank you, because that's exactly you know? what I was going I, for. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, you nailed it. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Thank you so much. Okay, now this next one, of course, having lived over in Italy and everything, a lot of my art is about, it's like when Stefan Bauma says our art is autobiographical. It is in a sense. And I, uh, I was wanting to uh, loosen up a little bit. So this is watercolor and pen and ink. And that's what I, I just wanted to do. Like, a, I, I, you know, I found a reference photo. And actually, it was my... A reference photo my daughter had taken of uh, a street 
busy street in Naples, you know, Naples, Italy, with uh, people's laundry hanging out from the, the apartment buildings, you know, and everything. Mm -hmm. And so I just kind of, uh, you know, this, this started out, it was an experimental piece. I didn't really know what direction I was going to go with it, you know, and everything. And I ended up, uh, this was like 2018 or Okay, I think the date's 2019, early 2019 when I completed it. And then I, in February, I entered in a uh, international uh, online art contest. And I ended up winning a special recognition award you know, for it. So that was kind of nice. It, uh, you know, it's uh, a okay. bit of an experiment, but it also, you know, got a, got a reward back. You know, it's a 11 by 15 inch watercolor. And you have those balconies. Today you'd have people on the balconies singing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <With> the, <laughs> the, the fact the fact that people are getting funny because they're so bored. <laughs> the point that I don't have any people, you know, in, in the street. There's just a you know, a couple cars and then the back this could be a good coronavirus image. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> and not even thinking about it, you know, what I created. <laughs> One thing, when I started to get back into uh, doing acrylic painting, I also, I'm heavily influenced by the art of Caravaggio. I love all of his work, especially his chiaroscuro technique and dark and light, light and everything. And uh, I also, you know, I do some religious paintings. This painting came about as a, as a tribute to Caravaggio's painting of the Doubting Thomas. And it came about as a direct challenge from my oldest daughter. When we were talking about Caravaggio, she went, yeah, sure, you can do Caravaggio. I said, what? Yeah, I want to see a Caravaggio painting. <laughs> so I said, well, which one's your favorite? She said, well, I like that. I like the Doubting Thomas, you know? Let's see what you can. She actually challenged me. Let's see what you can do. <laughs> so, and she said, and no cheating using Photoshop, you know, or whatever. Yeah. So when I decided on, I didn't want to do it exactly like, you know, uh, his painting. Yeah. You know, he has the full, you can see Christ's image, his face. And there's a couple apostles behind, you know, Thomas. And so I, I just kind of like did an abbreviated version with the main focal point of the finger, you know, being placed into the wound. And well, it's more intimate, you know, yeah. than having all the other characters in there with it. So this is a more intimate. Yeah. Thank that's you. what I get from it, that it's more intimate. And that was the main, you know, my, my main focal point. As I was creating this, so I took work in progress photos, and then I put it into a, made a short video. In fact, one of my, uh, Clyde's uh, stories episodes that I uh, publish sometimes. I did that. I created that specifically for my daughter, and I showed her so she could <laughs> see that yes, I was actually doing this, and uh, I impressed the young lady. She um, she didn't raise her eyebrows at me anymore when. <laughs> <laughs> I also entered this in an international contest back in um, August. That was my very first contest when I decided to start entering these online contests at the suggestion of a video from St Stephen Bauman. You know, he said, that's how you, you know, it can improve your art. So I came across the contest. I didn't have anything immediately ready. So I entered this. It was a, uh, it was called an open, uh, open theme. And it won special recognition, won special recognition. You two probably remember how I was so excited. That was mm -hmm. the very first award I have ever won for my art since I was probably 14 years old from what I can remember when I got a <laughs> blue ribbon in a local contest, <laughs> local county. Contest. So this piece has several different meanings for me. You know, it's, and it's a, uh, 20, it's a large piece. It's about a, uh, I think it's a 24 by uh, 30 inch, you know, 30 inch piece. It's interesting. interesting that it would be the Doubting Thomas for your first <laughs> award. Yes. That's, that's interesting. Oh, that, yeah, that is. Yeah, that's, that's what, you know, it kind of <laughs> surprised because 
I entered two pieces. I entered this piece and I, and I think I entered one of my flowers or something, you know, <laughs> and I was like, just shocked, but also very excited and very proud and, and humbled that uh, they selected this as a, for a special recognition. Okay, now we're coming up to the point where, we, you know, we've been listening to a lot of Stefan Bauman, you know, videos. So I have really been concentrating and trying to put into practice a lot of what he talks about. You know, he talks about the, you know, the usage of, of color and the usage of, of light and shadows. And with this piece, I call it Colorful Sunrise. Um, it was, I was really feeling that the, and this is, you know, the, I think sometime around uh, oh, November or December, yeah, of uh, 2019 is last year. So this is, you could say it's my, you know, my current, current work basically. And I also entered this in a contest and I won a special recognition. I think this was in uh, December. <laughs> cool. Yeah. But I employed all of the elements that Stephen Bauman talks about, you know, and I uh, really try, I, I really feel, feeling it and working hard, you know, to, to put all those uh, things that he talks about. Now, this particular piece, I call it uh, Never in Darkness. And what inspired this? This is 100% from imagination. Usually when I uh, create art, if I, I create the composition using several different photos because I call myself, I'm a studio artist. You know, I don't go out and paint from life <laughs> like Diane. Yeah, not, not yet. <laughs> not yet. I know you too We're talking. working on you. <laughs> So I'm a studio artist, but and I use you know multiple photographs. This particular piece is completely 100% from imagination, no photographs. I must have seen a photograph of this composition at some time in my past. It was in my mind. Um, this last last uh, I think this is like in September or something. Um, we uh, I had a power failure, and usually we get a power failure an hour or two hours, and then there lights come back on this power fair where our electricity was out for 24 hours and because i in my outside job i work nights so my sleeping is all messed up most of my art i'm up early in the morning when everybody else is sleeping i mean and i sleep during the day so i was up that night here it is it's two o'clock in the morning i can't sleep at all there's no power complete darkness total silence i i can't hear the music anything and i'm like what am i gonna do you know i, I want to create some art so so i had an led uh, lantern and it threw out enough light to where when i set it up next next to me i could at least see a canvas panel this is a uh, 11 by 14 inch canvas panel and so i just started I just kind of sketched out just a, this is ideal just popped in my head and I sketched this stuff out and I painted to a certain point. I couldn't do the details, but I could get, you know, the block block color in. And, you know, for most, you know, most of the night, that kept me occupied until, you know, about six or seven o'clock in the morning. And then I, you know, I fell asleep Went you know, went back, laid down, fell asleep. By the time I woke up in the afternoon, the power was on. I think that's what woke me up because all the lights came on. <laughs> so I went back and I saw what I had done, you know, and I said, well, okay. So I uh, added to it and uh, did the highlights and finished it up. And it was just, just a hundred percent, you know, uh, from imagination or from what was in my mind. Once again, you know, I tried to employ a lot of the, uh, Gara squirrel, and then the shadows and the lights, Stephen Bauman, you know, talks about you know, everything. And uh, I was really pleased of how I got this. You see the, the light from the candle? Yeah. Mm -hmm. That, I just, you know, I started on that. And then I was like, oh, my God, that is so beautiful. Don't mess it up, Clyde. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It just came, you know, this is a, you know, semi-realistic painting and for our listeners it's a painting of um there's a candle 
there's a book to be like a Bible and it has like a rosary on it, some pieces of bread in a silver bowl with some grapes and everything. And then there's a uh, ragged cross on the, on the, on the wall in the background. And the background is all dark, you know, where it's, there's, yeah, you're, uh, it's a, it's a religious painting. Yeah. You're never in darkness. This one I submitted to the, uh, Art Box Project folks when they had their exhibition during Art Basel Week in Miami, and so it was on display during Art Basel Week. Yeah, you know. that's cool. Didn't get any comments, but hey, at least I, but at least it was there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's kind of a neat picture because you you painted it when it was dark, and that's kind of what you were depicting as well. So it was, I guess, it was timely. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, never yeah. in darkness when you painted it while you were in the dark. Yeah, because if you you know if you have faith, you know, you're never you're never in dark. You know, this yeah. this is another composition, very much uh, trying to follow the Stephen Bauman philosophy with the light and the shadows, and of course with the chiaroscuro technique, 100 percent from imagination. Every single element here is created from my imagination. I didn't look at a single photograph, and I I just started adding and it has like an old time radio theme to it, you know, cause mm -hmm. and, I, and I call, I call it vintage, vintage relaxation. You know, you don't need TV, you know, you got the old radio, you got your coffee, you got your <laughs> rosary, you got your pipe and you got your books. Some books. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and you got a lamp in the corner, you know, shining a lot. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> That's, that was kind of like the theme that I, you know, I was going for you know, with this one, but I was really, really focusing on, you know, getting the shadows, you know, and I mean, and it, like I said, it's, it, it, it's, a, it was from imagination. So that's even harder when you don't have anything to look at, you know, and, and, but as I was, as I was uh, creating it, like, I think the idea popped in my head, okay, I'm doing do a stack of books. So they were pretty easy. You know, through the books, and I want to make try to you know make the pages. So basically, let me tell you, the books was all done first, and then I and then I said, okay, they're on the table. So let me get the color in. So I did all the I did the table, but then I'm looking. I said, and I had, you know, the light here, but I didn't have any real indication as to where it's actually. Yeah, you know, I knew it was coming from that direction, but where is it actually coming from? You know, so I said, well, I got to put a lantern in there or something. So you know, I put that in there. Wow, there has to be something else on the table. Okay, a cup of coffee. <laughs> okay, this is about me. I smoke a pipe. Okay, there's my pipe. Yeah. Oh, by the way, I did have my pipe to look at. I did look at my pipe to get <laughs> it right. <laughs> yeah. And then, okay, you know, uh, yeah, I had a, ro a rosary, you know, so put a rosary there. And I said, ah, this corner, you know, it's all black. I mean, I could have light shadow on it. No, no, let's put a radio there. Okay. And then <laughs> that's how it, it just one piece after it just started, it, it, it grew, you know, have you ever done that Diane where you just kind of a composition? Yeah. Sometimes the, I mean, a lot of times actually the paintings kind of talk to you and tell you what they need and want <laughs> you, you adjust and change to do that. Yeah. Yep. So that was pretty much this thing. It, it just kind of came into being by on its own, you know, it wanted to be born. Yeah. And let's see, I think we got one more and then we'll conclude. This is probably my most current. Oh, I, fin I finished this about a week ago. And like I said, I, I paint from reference photos and my daughters are wonderful photographers. They say, you know, I don't have any art. How come we don't have any art talent? I tell them, no, you do have art talent. You are really <laughs> good at picking out good compositions. So my daughter was down visiting in uh, Naples, Italy. She was vis visiting along the shoreline, the, what they call the Mergellina, and they have a uh, a winter uh, boat storage area where all the rich people, you know, store their boats. And there's literally hundreds of boats, and they're all, you know, they're covered in white canvas and white tarp, you know, and they stay there during the winter time. And she took this wonderful composition. And uh, I, and it was such a sunny day. And it was all kind of blue, you know, the sky there. And so that's what I, that's what this is created from. And uh, 
I call it uh, Kimberly's uh, Virgilina. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's a lot of bikes stocked all up at one spot. Yeah, it's a lot of detail. Yeah, actually, over here, on, you, of course, you know, in the picture, uh, there is a, they actually have a fence with locked up, and they have a guard on duty 24 hours. And so the people can't go in there and steal the boats, mess with them. You can't yeah. get in there, you know. And she was, this picture, this end down here with the boat sticking out, so she was on the other side of the fence. And, of course, you know, in her photographs, but she told me off to the sides where the guard is at, you know, off her to the uh, to the left, you know. <laughs> but uh, she, you know, just snapped that perfect picture that was just, you know, perfect. Of course, you know, you got the Vesuvius volcano in the background there, you know, off in the distance. And um, it was too far away to get any real detail, but there's a couple big yachts parked right over there, great big yachts. Yeah, look pretty, pretty, uh, who knows? There's, you know, quite a few of the. Yeah, those like $10 million boats. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I've seen those. Those are really cool looking. <laughs> Why this is all, you know, they, you know, lock down and this where they, you know, store all their boats and all the rich people, you know, and everything. So it, uh, uh, it's more, you know, uh, kind of. I decided to go a little, uh, instead of trying to go go realistic, go more of a impressionistic uh, realism, you know, and uh, kind of loosen up a little bit there instead of being so, uh, so tight-handed as some of my previous work. That's it for my studio. If you, our listeners, want to see these, these works of art and more, you can visit my website www.cjkalartworks.com that's cjkalartworks.com and that's where that's my main site and there's a lot of material up there if you scroll down you can see some of my early stuff pretty much everything that I do that I think is worth it I throw up every time I don't want to throw something up my uh, daughter's hammer me for it and say no that's good put that up there so <laughs> I bet just throw everything up. And what's amazing, uh, certain pieces that I don't like or I think is, is crap, people will go goo goo gaga over. So I just, I'm a poor judge of my own artwork. I just kind of, you know, throw it up there. By the way, this piece, this is a, uh, I think it's a 20, 24 by 30 inch and uh, on stretch canvas. Now, I like this. This is, I haven't got around to hanging on my wall, but it's going to hang on my wall. Yeah. <laughs> I don't blame me. <laughs> well, it's nice to see a um, group of your work and, you know, like all the different um, style, not styles, but different um, genres you go through and different interests you have. It really tells you, the, the viewer, a lot about your personality and what things are interesting to you. Well, thank you. It's interesting to see him. Too many scatterbrain. You can't stay. You can't. Stay. <laughs> <laughs> I, you know, I in in trying to follow advice of you know uh, some uh, experts will say you know if you want to get in a gallery you got to create a series. So if you remember, I created I I my antique uh, vintage junk car series and junk boat series and religious art series and I've got some of those grouped on my website like that but then I just no nah, I I, I uh, I'm a pulp radio art I haven't done that much I got real excited for a while and then I lost interest I've got to get back into that you know and yeah you do so uh, I just decided the latter part of 2019 I'm just going to do what I want to do and what my daughters want me to do and hey if people like it and want to buy it, fine. If they don't, oh, well, I'm doing what I want to do. Yeah. <laughs> I'm well, I think that shows in your work. Like, if you, I mean, you try forcing an idea that you, you know, like, you know, things you know will sell or things you know will be popular. You can do a few of those, but to do them on and on and on, it just, 
wears your soul out. <laughs> yeah. And, it, and you can tell in the work, it just doesn't have that same passion in it. So it, it is important to do what you need to do yourself. Yes, absolutely. Well, that's like, you know, I, most of my commissions this in the last couple of years have been uh, pet portraits and people have just love them. Now, one advisor may say, well, Hey, that's a commercial asset. Why not? Yeah. You can make money. You know, you're have, line up customers. Yeah. The problem is when I do a pet portrait, I put a lot into it, a lot of emotionally, because I, I consider it a, a great responsibility and it just drains me. And if I try to do that on a continuing basis, I think I would fail at it eventually. I, I don't think I'd be as successful as it is. I do one maybe uh, once a month or once every two months, you know, and, mm -hmm. and that's good enough for me. You know, I, I, I still keep, can, can keep the skill up and can still put the, uh, you know, put the quality there. But I seriously, if I, if I tried to pursue that as a regular business, you know, doing just commission work, pet portraits all the time, uh, <laughs> I don't think I'd be too successful eventually. I would, I would falter. Well, your heart has to definitely be in it. Yep. You know, if you're going to do it, because if you get good at it and people want you to do it all the time, then yeah, you have to definitely like animals and be willing to just uh, do portraits, you know, and Absolutely. then every once in a while when you don't have portraits then you can do what you want. In fact, one of the recommended, uh, if you, uh, what actually I shouldn't say video and it's now podcast, you know, Stefan Bauman is now doing a podcast, just audio where he talks with this artist that he's coaching, you know, on certain subjects. One of them that I recommended was, uh, with a artist, uh, Virginia Lago, which I had never heard of, but I guess she's uh, very popular and, uh, was his student for a long time. He does her specialty is pet yeah portrait. i listened to part of that and she was talking about how um doing the pet portrait she got burnt out and, and just portraiture in general i think i don't know if it was pet portraits or if it was the other portraiture she was doing i think she got burned out from it for a while out. she started out with pet yeah. portraits yeah she still <clears> does them but now she's branched into doing actual portraits but she's doing portraits of people with their pets Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you know she's a uh, yeah, advanced to another stage. She's I'm. Mean, well, yeah. people need a challenge, you know. And after you've gotten really good at something that you are in a niche niche with, um, sometimes you want to branch out and do add something because you know it, it adds a element of um, creativity that you haven't been doing. So, kind of breaks the monotony of just one thing on the page you put yeah. two and well that's like you you're a good example you're really good at making that uh uh specialty jewelry you know unique unique jewelry unique designs and you wanted to get back into to painting and drawing because uh you're starting to get burnt out on it that's a you know you're a good yeah. example of that <laughs> i mean i think that's just it's just human nature you know that was another thing that he talked about also in, in his uh, podcast. I don't know if it was that one because I listened to a couple, but he talked about how artists, you know, um, they do get burned out on doing the same thing over and over and over and again. And yeah, they want to do something art, different. Artist block. Yeah, that was it. How yeah. You did, you did an artist block, you know, and everything. And uh, yeah. you guys remember, I went through that, what, in the, two, I think it was 2018 when I had that uh, real bad rash. And so I couldn't hardly do anything. I had an allergic re reaction and had a really bad rash for like about a, a week or so. And then whenever I started to to draw again, it was like I couldn't even draw a stick man. <laughs> Remember? You guys were like, yeah, for like about two weeks there. I could not, I literally, I couldn't do, I couldn't create anything. And I, I've always, uh, I was told when I was very young and I seriously believe it, that you know my talent is is a, a gift from God, and I was beginning to wonder. He took it back, you know. He took it away <laughs> from me. <laughs> no, you just have to knock the barnacles off of it and get the gate swinging again. 
<laughs> that was it. So then, you know, I, I started uh, watching videos of, of how to get rid of artist block and they recommended, you know, doing little, little small sketches. And I, I think I did my, my beta fish there for a while. I did about like 10 or 15. Yeah. And it got me going again. I got the juices flowing again, you know, and I got over it. But yeah, artist block is a very real thing, folks. So, Yeah, I'm kind of blocked right now. So I haven't done anything in two weeks. <gasps> That's not like me. No. No, it's not. <laughs> you were really going good there. You know? I know, and I'm just blocked. I can't get over to the over to the easel. I can come out here, and I spend a little time, but then I go back to the house and do something else. I'm just blocked. There's quite a few artists that are talking about that now. I, I think emotionally a lot of artists are having problems with this virus thing that's going on. And yeah, I think it's that on is it. part of it because I had shows lined up for May and was mm -hmm. expecting to, you know, go do these things. And then I was going to put some paintings in a hotel in April and the bottom fell out. All of us gone yeah i mean the plans that i had been setting up for three years to start getting moving along with certain things the bottom just fell out gone so it's kind of you know it's kind of disappointing yeah my my exhibition is and i mean there's not a whole lot we can do about it because you know you just can't it's been but it's they still didn't, they didn't it's disappointing it. they just postponed us they, they they haven't given a date yet but it might be in june it might not you know i mean and then other ones that are coming up in August, uh, you know, it might and it might not. <laughs> <It's> just, <laughs> yeah, there's a lot up in the air right now. I think that that's affected a lot of artists because they have, you know, you have plans for doing shows or, you know, having things going on and now none of it's happening. And so you don't know, you know, what's going to happen, like what, what the next thing will be, how long it'll be before things start moving again. Mm -hmm. It is kind of. That's stymied. why I decided to do what. I did on, on Etsy to start adding a new product and it's working. So, well, yeah, before we finish up, what's your new product? Tell Face masks. <laughs> there we go, okay. uh, they're not, they're not plain or boring. They're cute. <laughs> give, give the website out where if somebody wants to order a, a face mask with a face mask. It's uh, the same one. It's itsy.com forward slash shop forward slash C B R O S N A N S. There we go. So, yeah. Handcrafted by a, by a real artist face mask. <laughs> yeah, face mask. <laughs> <laughs> they're a reasonable price too, right? Yeah, you're not Yeah, they're thirteen dollars plus shipping. Yeah, there we go. Okay. I'm not gonna gouge. So that's that's how that's how this artist, Constance our listeners that's how she's working her way through this coronavirus you know so hey that's really really you know if you got the skills you utilize it you know i would be making face masks if i could do it but I don't well have i've got all the fabric and i've got i've been you know because i've always made quilts and i've got all the remnants and stuff from the quilts and the sewing clothes and stuff so i'm just making face masks out of them <laughs> diane what you had mentioned earlier i've been uh watching different videos and different online a lot of artists are you know they're getting online now you know and um for us artists this is normal to be locked up but what's not normal is the idea that you can't go out the idea that you can't go in and exhibit out externally that is right. what i think is creating for artists a certain amount of depression right i mean staying in is a choice and being isolated is a choice but then when it's not a choice, then it's not, not any fun. Yeah. See, it's one thing for it to be a choice. And you're used to it. But when you are scheduled at one point of the year to go sell your wares in all kinds of different places, and then all of a sudden the rug snatched out from underneath you. I mean, it's not like I don't have things going on online. It's just I like to do one-on-one -on -one sales. And you get to meet people, talk to them, you know, get the feeling about your work and see what people like or don't like and you know i just like the one-on-one -on -one. i like to see what's selling and what's not going to sell you know because i make a variety of things so when i go i see you know because i've been trying to fill out the market here in oklahoma it's a lot different than it was in florida yeah so anyway all right we got anything else we want to we want to wrap this episode up Anything else you want to add or 
No, nothing else no. going on. Other than <laughs> everybody staying safe, you know, staying in and, and working on working on art. And for our listeners, this is Clive J. Gale, and this was episode 41 for April the 6th, 2020. And I'll have those images up on the YouTube version of the podcast, so you can take a look at those images. And we visited my studio and visited some of my art. Thank you so much for listening and helping keep uh, our spirits up. Thank you, Diane, and thank you, Constance, and good night. Good night, everybody. Good night, everybody. Bye-bye, folks. The Artist Friends Podcast is produced and edited by Clyde J. Kale. Participating artists, Diane Hunt and Constance Brosnan and Clyde J. Kale. You can find more information about Diane Hunt at www.dianehuntstudio.com. Constance Brosnan at www.etsy.com forward slash shop forward slash C-B-R-O-S-N-A-N-S. Clyde J. Kale at www.cjkaleartworks.com. If you'd like to participate or appear as a guest on the Artist Friends Podcast, please email cjkale at sign mystery-otr.com. That's cjkale at sign mystery-otr.com. This podcast is issued under the Creative Commons license. Thank you for listening.